just share the screen.
Well, if you're watching the recording, welcome to Lunch with Dr. Edgel. Uh, I'm going to be uh, on this WebEx meeting from noon to 1230. So if anybody's watching, I will take a look at a few things on our course page as partially a, a welcome. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring up our course syllabus. Always read the syllabus. All right, so I posted my regular office hours there. Uh, you don't have to have the idea that we have to WebEx in order for you to see me in my office hours. If you're an on-campus student, uh, you can certainly stop by my office. I should be there at those times. And if you call in to my office at those times, I should be there. Other times by arrangement. All right, let's take a look at some other aspects of the course syllabus. I may move my chat boxes over. There's no one here to chat at the moment. All right. Well, on the course syllabus, I give you all the technical details, my office location, phone number, email, what is this class? The concept of culture applied to the human environment. Geographical variations and evolution resulting from interaction between culture and physical processes. Culture and technological change, population and migration. Well, you take a look at the, the course schedule and the, the textbook table of contents. It ought also describe what's involved in uh, cultural geography. All right, I'm going to let you go ahead and read that. Is there a lot of place name geography to memorize? Not so much in a course like this. This is a systematic course in geography. We move from topic to topic rather than place to place or region to region. If you're an educator and you need a background in geographic place names, I suggest taking world regional geography. Oh, uh, one other uh, item I should mention, if you are in education and you're taking this course, you would be prepped in order to teach the high school course AP Human Geography. All right, well, let's see, is there, uh, what are prerequisites? Well, you have to know about computers, good reading skills. All right, uh, the textbook, well, you have the ebook that comes with the course. If you paid your tuition and fees, that means that you automatically have the access to the ebook. If you want a printed copy, you can order that through McGraw Hill at a discount. Okay, that's very important because this class, there's not going to be a regular lecture. It's asynchronous. Uh, means that you basically you're you're working on your own and you can work on your own 24 7 as long as you meet the due dates all, right, all the materials are all available online the reading assignments the quizzes the exams the lectures and the videos and so forth are all on canvas but feel free to contact me at my office if you want to talk. That's online, okay? I'm not gonna read down through all these. I, I think that that you can do that. Uh, I'm also gonna take a look if at some of the discussion board too. Looks like there's been a, a pretty good response in the first couple of days. All right, so the first schedule, basically you, you take the, the textbook, and I happen to have a print copy of it. And we're going to go through the chapters. Now, the, the, the course or the, the textbook is actually called Human Geography. And you might be wondering, well, uh, but this is cultural geography. 
but that's the same thing. Uh, certainly for general education, human geography and cultural geography are the same things. See, geography has this history. Uh, it, it, it was a, a physical science, like an earth science. Matter of fact, if you were taking a geography class 100 years ago, you'd probably be uh, taking a course called Readings in Geography, and you know what you'd be studying? Rocks, minerals, and landforms, and probably some botany on top of that. Uh, but uh, over the decades of the 20th century, geography evolved to be more of a social science. So geography has this dichotomy. It has its physical side. And courses we, we have like uh, weather and climate, and geomorphology or physical geography. Uh, and some of our uh, environmental science courses are also physical geography. But geography has its human side that includes cultural geography. Now, some purists might say that uh, cultural geography is really only cultural attributes like languages and, and religion, but um, uh, some things like economic geography aren't really cultural geography. But I think that they are. And certainly at this level, and certainly things like political geography, that's certainly cultural. All right, we'll look at, what are, what are we gonna look at here? We're gonna have some introduction. You'll learn about geography as a discipline and, and uh, mapping. Uh, we'll, we'll look at spatial distributions. Uh, that's the magic word in geography. Geographers look at everything spatially. Spatial means pertaining to the space on the Earth's surface, you know, spatial distribution of, of everything. Uh, and then we move on to looking at demography, population geography. You, know, you have some countries, populations are exploding, and some countries are in population decline, so those population dynamics. Uh, we'll look at languages and religion, ethnic geography, uh, uh, cultural landscape, and then we'll have our midterm exam that covers the chapters one through seven and any special topics. And then we move on to some other aspects of, of, of human cultural geography, agriculture. Well, agriculture certainly is cultural. There's a different place, different people, different environment, different agricultural strategies. Most of those agricultural strategies are, are, are due to cultural heritages. All right, so we, we look at that. Uh, urban geography, well, that's cultural. Political geography, that's certainly that's cultural. Uh, we take a short break for Thanksgiving, and then we come back for the uh, some uh, information about culture and human interaction with the environment. Okay, because, you, you know, cultural geography doesn't occur in a vacuum. It occurs in an environment. How do we react? with the environment? How do we adapt? What does the environment do to us? What do we do to the environment? And then we we come back and then we have our final. Okay, all right. Uh, also an important part of this course are the smart book reading assignments in McGraw-Hill. Perhaps I could take a look at some of those. Uh, your quizzes are all online on McGraw-Hill as well as your exams. All right, and the proportions of these, your reading assignments count for 20%, your quizzes 35%, the midterms 15, the final exams 20, and then you also have uh, a small percentage, 10% for participation. That means participation in the discussion boards, and Canvas will count your clicks uh, as to whether or not you watch the video and, and so forth. So. Uh, that's a measure. That, that's a small but meaningful portion. And then the course grading scale, as, as you can see, it's a step up to success, which I hope you do. All right, uh, attendance, uh, physical attendance isn't, isn't required, but you have to participate though. You have to turn your work in on time. All right, for a, a lot of the things that I have in the fine print, the terms and conditions. Uh, there's some information in there about the honor code, uh, tobacco use policy, and so forth. And, and also there's a list of these student services, which uh, I encourage you to find out about those. 
All right, so the, the course syllabus has all the rules and regulations of the course. So I hope that hits the, the high point. Uh, you were instructed to read the syllabus on the first day. If you have any questions about the syllabus, then you can get back to me. All right, let me go ahead and close out of syllabus. Is there something else we can take a look at? Should I put this into a student view? Because it's more like a student doing it. Let me show you a few things. Well, if I put it in student view, then I can't go to McGraw Hill. It, it looks like I've seen more than half the class has already created their, their McGraw Hill accounts at this point. In student view, I wouldn't be able to take you past this point because at this point you have to create your account, uh, username, and uh, sign in. Uh, but then you don't have to sign in anymore after that. And it's very important to make sure that if you're uh, using the McGraw Hill that you go through our Canvas web page because McGraw Hill needs to know what section to match you up with and send your scores over. And also give you access to that free ebook. All right, so I'll have to get out of student view. I'm going to move my little window too. All right, so let's go over to McGraw Hill. That's taken a while. Oh, you know what? I could look at student view, couldn't I? Oh, let's see. There's some information over here on the left. Uh, uh, there's the point where you could read the ebook. And also, if you wanted a printed book, you could rent it or you could purchase the loose leaf. Uh, that, that's what I have. I have a loose leaf that I put into a binder. Uh, those are good, and that might actually help you with the quizzes, because the quizzes are open book, and sometimes it's easier to manage a, a print book than to open and close windows all the time in the in the ebook. But let's take a look at some of the ebook. It'll probably take me back to the last place I was in the ebook. And here we are. With the ebook, you can read this. Okay, it's the uh, the pages in the ebook don't match up with the pages in the printed book, but but that's okay. So where am I? I'm in the page ten of the of the ebook, which that's past some of the front matter. Something that's very useful is the uh, audio. Now I have my headphones on, so you wouldn't be able to hear that, but but go up here and click on the audio and uh, that will have the, the smart book read the text to you. And in the new version of this, uh, the reading is actually pretty good. It's very human-like. So uh, there may be some occasions where if your eyes are tired, you can just open up your ebook, put it on the audio reader and do the readings that way. So give that a try. I, I, I think I might have sent out a, uh, a, a special video about that already. Okay, so this is the ebook. You're going through your, your reading and all of that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. All right, some other things here. You have some assignments. Um, the smart, what we call the, the smart book, SB. All right, those are the online reading assignments. Uh, those are easy to do. It, it makes you do the readings. And then you have quizzes. The first quiz isn't open up yet. Maybe sometime later I can share a video with you taking a few practice quiz questions. But for right now, let's take a look at the smart book. Should I begin? Is it going to begin or is it going to take me to where I was in the last one. Oh, okay, this uh, looks like it. Oh, I see, no, this is this is picking up where I left off. So here, uh, continue the questions. All right, so let me just demonstrate one question. This is actually 
more towards the end of the chapter. Okay, so you, you're you're prompted with a number of questions. So, for example, this one, a blank map is an internal model or representation of an area or environment developed by an individual on the basis of information or impressions received, interpreted, and stored. Use only one word per blank. Well, I think it's given us multiple choice. I'm glad I didn't have to write that in. Uh, is it a thematic? It almost sounds like a thematic map. I'm, I'm thinking they're looking for mental maps. You know, I'm really not sure. So here's what you do. Yeah, you can read about the concept. And the great thing about the smart book is when you're doing these exercises, if you're prompted with a question and you're unsure, for you don't remember it from the readings, smart book will take you to that section of the book where it's talked about and highlight the answer for you. All right, so uh, let me go ahead and go back to questions. Look like they're looking for mental maps. You can read about that later. And how confident am I? Well, I don't know. I had to look it up, so medium confidence. The smart book uh, tracks you in a lot of different ways, and it tries to assess your your learning. Now, if you ever miss a question, uh, you can. What smart book will do is it'll recognize that. And it'll cover the same concept again in a question perhaps worded a different way. And so as you as you page through, you can't help but have 100% as long as you complete the assignment. And sometimes I tell uh, my students that the smart book reading assignments, they're like shooting fish in a barrel. You know, it takes you to that page of the, of the book where the answer is, as long as you keep at it, you can have 100%. It's not like that for the quizzes. The quizzes don't take you there and <laughs> highlight what the answer is. Those are a little bit hi harder. But the great thing about the smart book, the smart book is one of the most important things that you're going to get out of this class, uh, is that it takes you through the readings. Reading comprehension is a very important educational goal that I have for you. All right, I'm going to click on medium. All right, so it looks like I was right. So then I could go to the next question. Now, now the thing about the, the smart book reading assignments, you can exit these if you want to, and you can pick up where you left off. It's not that way with the quizzes. Okay, the quizzes are one sitting and they're timed. And if you exit the quiz, it's submitted. So you have to be very careful. You have to make sure you answer every question because you can't come back to it. Now you can retake a quiz. Uh, I have all that covered in the syllabus, and you can take a look at that under the README, under uh, Canvas modules as well. With quizzes, you're allowed three attempts at a quiz, and, and you get your best score of all of those attempts. And the exams are kind of the same way. All right, so I have, it's about 1220. I don't uh, see as anybody has has wanted to have lunch yet. I may be due for a drink to go along with my lunch here. I think I may be tangled up in my own cord. Excuse me. Okay, uh, so that's some aspects of the smart book. And if you have other questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, we can have a phone conversation or uh, we, we meet as uh, WebEx and you can share your screen and that kind of thing. So that's good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of student view, return to instructor view. All right, so that's the McGraw Hill. And looking at the smart book, some warning about the quizzes. I go ahead back to our home page. There's some other things I can go over with you. Uh, let's put it. Let's go ahead and put it back into student view. And let's go over here and look at modules. See, everything's broken down to modules. There's some very important readmes up here. Make sure you read those. And then each chapter has its own modules. 
I think start out, I, I have, there's the objectives, what you're supposed to learn in that chapter. And there's also the lecture notes from the textbook. These are in there. Um, they're not a substitute for doing the readings, but students often ask me, can you give us an outline of the what to study? And I go, okay, uh, here you go. So this is kind of an outline. It's the major points, sketchy, but it's no, it's an outline. It's no substitute for reading the chapter. Okay, but sure, you know, it's an outline of the location or you might see a question on what's the difference between site versus situation. You might see a question on relative location. You might see a question on absolute location versus relative location. So, yeah, that's a, that's an outline. Okay. All right. So I won't spend a whole lot of time with those. Uh, they're not as uh, in depth as reading the ebook should be for you. All right. I'm going to go ahead and go back. What else do I have here? I have some video links. Uh, coming up next week, I'm going to assign you to look at a video. And uh, there's the icebreaker discussion board. A lot of you have been working on that already, and I'm I'm very happy with the response on that. Uh, there's a link to the one of the videos I want to have you do, and there's a link to the assignments that you uh, need to do. As a matter of fact, these are due to the the uh, smart book tutorial that's due today, and the the icebreaker that's due today as well. And also, you can get to your reading assignments this way. Uh, there's a special discussion board about map projections due next Friday. And the first quiz is due next Friday. Usually with the quizzes, uh, the quizzes usually launch about midweek, and they're always due on Friday. And every week, the smart book learning assignments uh, they they're always I think they're almost they're already all open, and they're due on the Thursday every week. But you can do them ahead of time, though. This, all right. So look out for that. This is coming up next week. Let me go up to announcements. See if there's any announcements. Uh, so you've you've read over everything you need to do on the first day of class. If you have it, if you're a late register, then make sure that you you take a look and you you do all of those things. What else do I have in here under announcements? Now announcements are very important for online asynchronous courses. You need to read the announcements every day. Check Canvas every day to see if there's an announcement. Day two, are you set up yet? Yeah, what you need to do. Uh, in order to be attending, if you've created your McGraw-Hill account at this point, you're attending. Because otherwise, if if a student doesn't sign in and it's the second week, I have to report you as not attending. And a registrar's office might drop you from the course. All right. So do that. And uh, then lunch, uh, that's what we're doing now. Customer support, McGraw-Hill. I'm thinking that I'm, I'm hoping that you'll you'll never have to deal with that. It's hard to tell when when things just don't won't work. Well, what is it? Is it your computer? Is it your internet connection? Is it your browser? Is it a problem on McGraw Hill? Is it a problem with Canvas? Did I not send out the right assignment? You know, you, it could be a number of different things. Uh, when something doesn't work for you, what I always tell students to do is, well, take a screenshot of it says, you know, there's an error or or something like that. What kind of error? Well, take a screenshot so I can better try to, try to figure out and help you what might be wrong. First assignments are due today as well. Get those out of the way, the smart book tutorial and the icebreaker, so you can spend the weekend studying chapter one. Chapter one's introductory, but hits on a lot of major points in geography. Uh, plus, you have to read the appendix on map projections, too. So to prepare for next week, the first full week, then uh, you, you want to read ahead on your ebook. Okay.
And also, I may talk about this at a later time. I, I am looking for a few good students. Now, especially if you're in the, if you're a geo environmental studies major, uh, geography certificate, GIS certificate major, uh, I'd love to talk to you about working on particular projects. Maybe we could do one for uh, RISE or REACH or, or PERC. Uh, so I'd, I'd be happy to work with you. Contact me by email if you're interested in that. Okay, I think that's probably all I could do. And I, I'm coming up on 12:30, and and since uh, it doesn't look like anybody has joined, then I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Uh, but you can still contact me uh, anytime. Send me a Canvas message or a regular UNCP email. Okay, I hope that this welcome video has helped you, and I will see you on the internet later.